Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the one-way ANOVA video. So we're going to walk through um, how to do a one-way ANOVA, read the output, and then as a bonus, um, calculate a, a Fisher's confidence interval. So um, again, hopefully you have the university data, and we want to go to the um, ANOVA tab to figure out what we want to do. So this is kind of a wordy one, but um, the variables are kind of long, so, so bear with me here. So Test if there is any difference in the average percent of freshmen receiving federal, state, local, or institutional grant aid among college slash universities in the southeast, southwest, and New England. And so uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll identify, well, what's the numeric thing I need? And it looks like the average percent of freshmen receiving this type of aid. Um, and then how, how's it going to be split? Well, it looks like it's going to be split on location, southeast, southwest, and then New England. Um, and so there's three categories, hence why we have to use ANOVA, a t-test, we would only do two, so this is three categories. So we need to go find these things. We need to find um, the numeric and the location. So back into the, the cleaned data sheet here, um, I know this geographic region one is, is one that we're going to need. So I'm going to do um, two things here. I'm going to create essentially like a cleaning sheet to get organized, and this might be good practice for you all. So I would go to the ANOVA here, and then down along the bottom, you should see this um, plus sign. If you do a new sheet, uh, it should come up as sheet two. You can right click and rename this just um, uh, data prep or something like this. Uh, it gets confusing if it's all on sort of one sheet. And so let's just go to the clean data. We're going to want geographic region, so I'll select that. I'll copy it. Uh, I'll put it over here. And then uh, what else do we need? We need. Um, percent of freshmen receiving federal, um, state, local, or institutional grant aid. So we need to find that um, in the cleaned data. So I, I, I know this data pretty well, um, so I know kind of where to look for it or what to search for. Um, it took me a little while to get used to that. So um, like if you started with just percent, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of percent variables in here. So I'm just hitting enter as it goes across, um, across, and so... Uh, you can kind of go across a, a bunch of different times and, until you get to where you're kind of looking for. Um, it's a long way down, but there we go. So it looks like a, um, I missed it, but you could also search for aid or something like that. But um, it looks like percent of freshmen are showing federal, state, local, or institutional grant aid. So that's what we want. So we're going to take that column, we're going to copy it, and we'll put it over to our data prep. All right. And so... Um, now what do we need? So again, back to here, it's like, well, we need Southeast, Southwest, New England. So you might want to go ahead and um, just make a note about that. So I'll do Southeast, um, I don't know, let's say percent freshman. And then we can do Southwest um, percent freshman. And again, you have to know freshman means um, receiving aid. Um, and then New England uh, percent. I don't know why that's not bold, but I'll bold it. And then I'll usually select across, and I want those to fit. And so you just double-click in between there. So now let's go here. So uh, geographic region and percent uh, of receiving aid. So first what I need to do is um, let's throw on the filters here. So again, Control-Shift or Command-Shift-L. Uh, you also could select all your data and go up and do the filters here from the Home tab. Um, and then let's just sort of get it split for us. So what we can do first is... Um, we'll click on the little drop down and we have a lot more areas than we actually need um, And so I'm going to go piece by piece. So I'm going to unselect these and then what I want is Only for the southeast and I'll do okay, and then I don't want these blanks in here either So I'll do the drop down here and then um, very bottom blanks and I'll do okay And then what we can do is we'll click here and then we'll do control or command shift down It'll highlight all the way to the bottom because we're, we don't have any blanks anymore We'll copy this and then we'll go back over to ANOVA and we'll paste it under here So again, you can just do control or command V And the ordering doesn't matter. You actually don't even have to have the same number of observations uh, in these ANOVA tests um, For the simple one way. Okay, so now the same process um, two more times So I'll hit escape and then I'll go to the top so now, instead of southeast, I want southwest. So I'll do southwest. I'll uncheck southeast. I'll do OK. And again, this one's already unchecked the blanks. It stays consistent. So again, click here. Control or Command Shift down. Copy. Um, command or Control C. Uh, you can also right click. And then we'll do here. 
And then the last one is going to be the New England. So let's hit Escape to, to get rid of the copy. And then we'll do New England. Okay. And now we have New England. So again, I only care about the numeric. So Control or Command Shift down, copy, and paste. And again, I right clicked there. Um, you can paste sort of any way you want. And now it's set up. Right? We have our, our three columns with one outcome. It, this is the same outcome uh, in all three. It's the percent of freshmen receiving federal, state, local, or institutional aid, and then it's split across these three categories. And we could have done them all if we wanted to, just I wanted to make this a little bit simpler. So now we're ready to do the test. So we'll do data, data analysis. And then these are alphabetical again. So um, I don't cover ANOVA two-factor two uh, with or without replication. I think the, the underlying assumptions are too strict, and so I don't do that. So I do ANOVA single factor, do OK. And this one's nice. We just have to highlight the whole input range. We don't have to select multiple variables. So they all have to be next to one another, which is nice. And what they did. So two ways we can do this. We can select across the whole columns. Um, or again, you can uh, start here and do Control or Command Shift right. I don't know if it's going to let me, I think. Backspace. I'll click here. Oh, my Control or Command Shift's not working. Let me hit Cancel and try again. Another. I'll click here. Control Shift. Not what I want. So if I click here, oh, it works here. But I don't know. But we'll do data analysis. In fact, let's try again here. Control shift right and down. Um, notice uh, I knew that this was the the largest column. But if if your largest column was somewhere in the middle or on the right, you'd have to hit down. Just make sure you have all of your data in there. It doesn't matter if you have blanks. Um, so we had labels in the first row. That's always super important because it'll um, make the output a lot more easier to read. And again. Um, I'm going to put the output range on the same sheet. You don't have to. You can create a new one. It's up to you. Uh, but I'm going to put it maybe, uh, let's do right here. Right, enter. We'll hit OK. And we have the output. And again, I don't know why this doesn't auto fit, but I'm going to select all of this and then double click between one. Um, maybe it'll do that. And so now let's see if there's any difference. So where we look at this table, so where my eye gets go. So first, it gives you some summary statistics from our, two group, our three groups. And then where we're looking here is the first step. So you could either look F versus F critical. So this is the test statistic. You'd say the test statistic is larger than the critical value. So we can reject our null and prove that there's some difference between these three. We don't know which one yet. Um, or the one, again, again I kind of like, because I don't like to have to get the critical values, this p-value. Again, um, this is a, essentially zero. It's super, super small. So 0% unsure, 100% confident. Um, that there is some difference. And so if you're just doing the ANOVA test and you want to show some difference, you're done. Um, the hard part is now it's like, well, what if I came back to you and said, well, what difference? Is it the Southeast versus the Southwest? Is it the Southeast versus New England? Is it the Southwest versus New England? Is it all of them? Is it only one of them? Well, just with the ANOVA, I can't say anything. All I'm saying is one of these, at least one of these things, differ from the other. Um, how we actually go through, and this is the bonus board, and figure like where the differences are, are the Fisher's confidence intervals. And so this is a formula from the formula sheet. Uh, most other programs do this for you automatically. Excel doesn't. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and bring over the formula. Uh, so I have it on a separate sheet um, in terms of uh, on the, the formula sheet. You might have this. You should have it if you're in my class or if you're in another class. Um, you can look it up online. I don't really care. Um, and so I'm going to do insert, I'm going to insert a text box. Uh, I think that's just easier for us. And so um, I'm going to, let's see, I'll put it here. And I'll do, uh, I've just copied this and I'm going to paste it over here. And so this is the formula. We got to pick our two groups. So uh, let's do southeast versus southwest. And I'm going to need two things here. So I need a lower bound for the confidence interval, so lower bound. And then I need an upper bound. All right, so I'm going to do some, some quick tricks here. So I'm going to do merge and center, and then bold, and bold, and bold. So once we do the, the lower bound, the upper bound will be easy. So I'm just going to walk through this formula right here. And so x bar i, x bar j, those are just the sample means, which we'll see here. And um, we're doing southeast versus southwest. So I'm going to use these two numbers. Um, this is going to be a critical value that comes from the t-table. I'm going to come back to this. Um, MSE is mean squared error. So it's in this MS column. It's the second one. So I'll need that one. 
And then um, ni and n subscript i and sweet j are just the sample sizes. In this case, it's count, and so I'll need these two. So the only thing we don't have right now, and again, uh, I'll show you how to do this thing, is, is this critical value. And a lot of people will get tempted to like, oh, this is a critical value. Well, no, this one's got to come from a T table, kind of like the two groups we were comparing in the past. Um, it, uses, it follows the T distribution. So let's assume we're, we're using a 5% significance level. So 0.025 is going to be the first component. And then the DF is right here. So NT minus C. So this is total sample size minus number of categories. And it doesn't matter which two are comparing. And so the long way is you could add all these up and then subtract three. Or if you um, sort of understand what an ANOVA table is, uh, here are the degrees of freedom you're going to use. And so our coordinates for this are going to be, and again, you have, we're gonna, I'm going to bring the T table over here in just a second. So um, I'm going to type these in. So 0 0.025 because we did alpha divided by 2, and then comma, 617. And again, if, if you're wondering where that 617 came from, it's NT minus C, so these added up minus, we had one, two, three categories. Okay, so to get this critical value, what we're going to do is, um, and again, you might have a different version of this, depending on like what, if you're in A class of mine or not, um, they all kind of look the same. So here's the Z table, we need to go to the T table. All right, and how it's going to work is like that first portion is at the top, so 0.025. So I know I'm going to be somewhere in this column. And then the degrees of freedom are on the left. So I'm looking for 617. And notice um, I have, um, if you scroll down the table or on the table, um, I have 1,000 and 500. We're always going to round down. So we find where those intersect. So um, I'm in this column, but I need to go down until I find 500. So that critical value we're going to use is 1.965. All right, and so you might make a note of that or something like that over here, like t crit equals 1.965. And doing like that number is never going to change um, regardless of what you're going to compare here. So um, Excel is a calculator. Let's let it do its job here. So we're going to do equals, and I'll open a parenthesis. So the first one is the sample mean. I'm going to let southeast be the first group. So I'll take their average, and I'll do minus the sample mean from the second group, in our case southwest. So I'll do this. I'll close my parentheses, and then um, for lower bound, I do minus, and then we said that critical value is 1.965, so we'll do 1.965, and then um, Excel doesn't know multiplication if it's just next to one another, so we have to do the star, and then we need the square root of the mean squared error times 1 over the sample size, so we'll type um, SQRT, all right, returns the square root, and now we need the mean squared error, which will be this. All right, now again, I'm just kind of following along the output. Um, and then times, and then I'll open a parenthesis, just like it looks in the formula, one divided by the sample size for the southeast, right, plus one divided by the sample size for the southwest. All right, and I'll close that first, that parenthesis there, and I'll close the second parenthesis, and now I'll hit enter. All right, and so the lower bound is this. And you could retype that whole formula and do everything again, but if you get crafty with Excel, what I can do is, um, if I click on here and I have my command bar, I'll go, I'll copy this, I'll hit enter to get out of it, then I'll go, click on the upper bound, I'll paste it, nothing changes, and I'm just going to change this minus to a plus. Uh, and now, sort of an easy finding here is, well, notice that zero is in this range. So, the pos of the possible differences, no difference is possible. Right? This is the result of doing southeast minus southwest. These two are like the bounds. So it could be um, that the southeast is lower or that the southwest is higher. I'm probably confusing you all. Um, let's simplify. So I'll say zero is in the confidence interval. Thus, we cannot prove that there is a difference between these two groups. All right, because what these intervals are, it's the result of doing the possible potential results from doing southeast minus southwest. And so the lowest it could possibly be, so southeast minus southwest is negative. Well, in that case, southwest would have to be bigger. But then the biggest possible difference is southeast minus southwest equals 5. Well, in that case, southeast would have to be bigger. All right, and so we can't show a difference between those two groups. 
All right, and so I wouldn't say there's a difference. Well, let's do another quick one here, um, just for practice. If if you're comfortable with it, um, you're you're fine. Um, you can be done. Let's do Southeast versus New England. And so um, I'm going to copy this. So just here, and so I'm going to change this to New England, and I'm going to go through the formula here. So I'll do equals open parentheses again. I'm going to do Southeast average minus New England average. All right, and then minus. Um, the critical value, 1.965 times the square root of, the mean squared error is never going to change, times 1 divided sample size for southeast plus 1 divided by the sample size for New England. Close parenthesis, close parenthesis. Oh, I made something wrong here. I did something wrong. Close And I think I, I forgot again, I forgot to put my multiplication in here. I was dumb. Um, again, Excel doesn't know to do that automatically. All right, so if the lower bound is positive, you notice, hopefully you know that this upper bound is going to be bigger, right? Because the lower bound is as small as the difference can be. So I'll do copy. And then I'll go here and I'll paste this formula. And I'll do plus. All right, and now, all right, so now, a simplified way, zero it. So zero Come on, gray. Zero is not in the confidence interval. So we can say <coughs> that there is a difference between the southeast and northeast. We can also go further, right? Because, like, and then we can say, um, right, because the confidence interval is completely positive, I'm going to go down here. Uh, we can say that southeast is greater than um, northeast. Uh, because the only way to do southeast minus northeast and get two positive numbers right, is if the southeast is better. So we can actually, or not better, bigger. All right, so we can say there's a difference. Right, that's step one. We're 95% confident. Um, kind of go through in class. And then we can kind of back out like, and it looks like the southeast is higher. What do I mean by southeast? It means a larger percentage of freshmen receive federal, state, or local, or local or institutional grant aid in the southeast than in the northeast. Right, so I hope this is useful. Again, if you wanted to do one more, you could do southwest versus New England. Um, I think you would find uh, they are different as well. Uh, but I hope this was useful. Um, a lot going on here, uh, but it's good practice utilizing.